What is happening guys? It is your boy Brad here with another video. Uh, today is my reaction, my full reaction to the game yesterday along with the player ratings. But first, before we get into any of that, I'm going to talk a bit of boxing because there was something that happened on Saturday night that actually made me fucking smile. Anthony Joshua retained his uh, unified heavyweight championship by beating Kubrat Pulev in nine rounds. It took him to knock him clean. Beautiful, beautiful knockout. Beautiful knockout from Anthony. Little left hand fade, little left fade, and then the right came round underneath the chin, and Pulev was down. That was a beautiful shot, but what a fight. What a fight that was. Brilliant game plan by Joshua. Go into the fight, jab away at him. And the third round, we saw it. The, uh, the knockdowns. In the third round, I thought back then, I thought, oh my god, he's taking him out. He's, he's back to the old Joshua. The old aggressive Joshua, what we needed to see. What would go on top of a man as soon as he sees. The uppercut came in, he literally hit him under the chin. He's, he was wobbling. And Joshua was like, smelling blood and he just went for him. Literally full on, bang, bang, bang. Knocked him down. And then he got back up, bang, bang, bang. Straight on him. Knocked him down again. But then as the rounds went on, he started to get his head back. He was um, better on his feet. It was Pulev. And then um, he got back into it. And um, yeah, Joshua just kept jabbing away, waiting for the opportunity. And then in the ninth, the uppercut again. The hyper uppercut straight underneath the chin. Sent him into a spiral. He was down again on the floor. Got back up. Within seconds, left feint, right hand cross. Straight across the face. Good night to the fight. Unbelievable. Do I want to see Joshua versus Fury next year? Damn right I do. What a fight that is going to be if that happens in 2021. My God. But of course, there is still... Well, Fury wants the fight next. But there is one more mandatory for one of Joshua's belts. And that is Alexander Usyk. So... We'll see what happens next. But on to the football now. And uh, it is the day after the loss against Burnley. 1-0 at home. Four straight home defeats for Arsenal this season. Seven defeats overall. Uh, four wins. And a draw. Not good enough. Not good enough. Something needs to change and it needs to happen now. The club's a mess. <clears throat> The club's a mess, no doubt about it. The club is in an absolute state right now. People are saying that we're going to get relegated this season. Some people are even saying we're going to get relegated this season. That is Arsenal Football Club they are talking about. That is a prestige club they are talking about. Relegation, are you fucking mental? It ain't going to happen, we ain't going to get relegated, but we need to turn this farm around, but the next three games are killer. Southampton at home, they are in the form of their life. They are third in the table. We are not going to have an easy game there for a start. I watched the Southampton game on um, yesterday. And, um, my God, they tore. They tore Sheffield United apart. They were literally hands up better than Sheffield United. And they are deserving of their place right now. They've got players like James Ward-Prowse who can take free kicks like a god. He's a god at free kicks and set pieces. Then you got Danny Ings, the prolific finisher. He's just unstoppable. He's unplayable. And they've got they've got all sorts of players on the pitch who are good. J Yannick Vestergaard, one of the coolest defenders in the Premier League in terms of <coughs> in terms of passing from the back, playing out from the back. He's a good passer of the ball. But Wednesday's going to be a killer. Then on Saturday we've got Everton who did start the season off like house on fire and now they've started to come down a bit but they did get a win against Chelsea on Saturday. 1-0 thanks to a guilty Sigurdsson penalty. That's going to be a killer of a game. And then just to fucking cap it all off we got Chelsea. A team that spent nothing under Frank Lampard in one window got into the Champions League. Oh dear. We... Oh. How could it go so wrong for Arsenal this season? How has it gone this bad? How? 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 Four home games and we've lost them in a row. 
Leicester, Wolves, Villa, and now Burnley. Burnley, a team that we have never lost to, never lost to at home. We go and lose to them. First time since 1974. It's always us. Always us. It's a joke. It's a pissing joke. I've had enough. And I've read social media. It's all over the place. I tear out, I tear out. You chuck him out now, we get a new manager. What's that going to do? Absolute fuck all. There's going to be no... Ba there'll be that bounce where we'll get a few good results under our belt like we did with Emery. And then next minute it'll just turn to fucking shit. Because the players that are there have been from a failed regime before that failed. They've been from a failed regime before. Like the Granite Shackers, like the Hector Bellers, like the Rob Holdings. I can name every single one of them. I can name every single one of them. But I just can't be asked because literally I'll go on a full scale rant if I don't. <coughs> <clears throat> but I'm going to get into the player ratings now. Starting goal, Burnt Leno. Didn't really have much to do. Couldn't do anything about the goal. Distribution was poor. Too slow on the ball. When we were 1-0 down, you're thinking to yourself, you're watching him and he's playing really slow and you're thinking, speed it up a bit, get it upfield. Try and give the striker something to go for. I can't give him more than a four. Literally, he had nothing to do with the goal. But at the same time, he was horrible in terms of his distribution, his speed on the ball and such. It was it was horrible. Now, into a player that needs to be fucking dropped out. I'm glad he's suspended for Wednesday, Hector Bellerin. He is utter garbage. The only thing that he did decent tonight... Oh, I can take a throw in again. Yay! Let's celebrate. Fuck off. Literal joke he is. You've been at the club how long? About five years, four years, five years? <sighs> Can't cross a ball. Couldn't cross a fucking road. He goes down the wing and then he brings it inside. What's that all about? You're a wing. You're you're right back. You're supposed to go down the wing, not cut inside and play sideways. He might as well have his brain switched to sideways. He might as well move sideways like this. Sideways football, sideways Bellerin. Exactly the same shit as always. I'll give him... I'm not even going to give him a mark. I'm giving him a zero. Sorry, but he's been shit. Even though he took, fault, even though he took the throne properly, he was shit. Zero. Rob Holding. This guy does not deserve a place in this team. End of story. End of story. I don't care about statistics saying he had this many blocks or that many blocks or that many tackles. He's shit. You're saying that William Saliba, a guy we bought in for 27 million, is not better than Rob Holding. He was in a team with a defender that's gone to Leicester and he's playing every single game. And he was second best to William Saliba, was William, was Fafana. He was second best. But yet he's getting Leicester's team every single week. Why can't Saliba get in our team? I understand the situation, but it's a joke. It needs to be sorted out. Rob Holding, I give a three. Not good enough at all. Um, next to him, Gabriel. You can see now that the, the shit bug has definitely rubbed off on him because he has literally gone downhill. Even though he was our player of the month for the last three months, he's been our best player for the last three months. For the last three months, Gabriel has been superb. Yep. Mm. He has been superb. Unbelievable. Unbelievable signing. A coup signing for 27 million. But definitely the shit bugs definitely rubbing off him. He's, he looked a bit flat. He looked a bit he kept, he liked to get for he likes to play that forward pass. He doesn't like everyone playing it back to him and such and playing backwards forward thinking. That's what I like about him. Um I'll give him a five because there was not much he had to do. And um, he was a bit shaky at times, but other than that, it was um, standard performance, I think, from Gabriel. Kieran Tierney, he was probably the... the He was the opposite of what Hector Bellerin is. He drove forward, he got crosses in. That's what Kieran Tierney does, but there was no one on the end of the cross. There was one specific cross, and I'll get to that later, but I will to... Well, yeah. He put the ball in, and there was a chance, and it was missed. So, Kieran Tierney, I'll give a five. Due to the fact that he was um, trying to get forward, trying to get crosses in, taking on his man, beating his man at times. But, <laughs> standard performance today. 
On to Mohamed El Nenny. Not the best of games for me. This is exactly why he doesn't start for Arsenal. This is exactly why he doesn't start. Has a good game Thursday, but that's against Dundalk. Let's be real now. Dundalk. Who's better, Dundalk or Burnley? Burnley. By a mile. Sorry, but El Nenny today... Well, yesterday, I should say. <laughs> not today. But El Nenny... <clears throat> not good enough for me today. Or not good enough yesterday. Oh, I keep saying today. I'm just fucked off. Literally, I'm just fucked off. I'm still pissed off from yesterday, so... Just bear with me if I get some stuff wrong. Uh, but El Nenny, I'll give a free. A free? Does that sound generous or... Nah, I think that's generous enough. Free. Uh, Granite Xhaka, minus one fucking thousand. One million. What? Minus one million. He let the team down with that fucking red card. Why would you go and grab someone around that fucking neck? VAR caught that and then it's a red card instantly. It's violent conduct. He's brain dead. He's fucking brain dead. Literally, I've fucking had enough. He needs. I would. I would go and get a taxi right now. Take him to the airport. Say bye bye. Get out of my club. You waste of fucking money. We made this man captain. What did he do? Tore the armband off. Threw it away. Giving it the old Hulk Hogan at the. Oh, can I hear you? Can I hear you? Fucking pissed her. And then he tells the fans to fuck off. Utter joke. Zero minus fucking one million. Literal fucking joke. A liability is. No more I can say about him. <sighs> William. Now, this guy didn't have a bad game. He didn't have a bad game. Put a few crosses in. I've been reading the statistics. They say that he put 14 crosses in. He made three of them. Completed three of them. <sighs> but... For me, he didn't have too much of a bad game. He was trying, he was skipping past his man. But other than that, he didn't really have that much to do in terms of going back and defending. But today, why do I keep saying... Oh, my God. What? Hell, Brad. Um, William, I'll give a five. Saka, why the hell are we putting so much into this young man? This young man is showing... The first teamers, exactly how to fucking play. It's a joke. You've got players like Aubameyang, Lacazette, William, Xhaka, and Saka is showing them all up. Every single one of them. Saka, I'll give a six because... Well, actually, no, I'll give him a five. Straight down the middle five for Saka to the... Yeah. I keep saying today, I'm fucking... Oh, I'm stoked. I'm absolutely fucked off. Still. And I'm tired as well. I'm fucking pissed. So excuse me if I keep saying today. It's a fucking joke. Um, Lacazette. Didn't really do much. Had the chance. The chance. The chance at the half. In the first half. You saw Chris Wood's effort hit his shoulder and go out. That was a warning shot. But that. You're supposed to be a striker. He, he could not finish it. He played you straight down the middle. Straight down the middle. But I'll give him Grant. I'll give him Grant. The second half, most of the play came through him. But as soon as the Jacka thing happened, everyone just fucking lost their heads. And down tools, and that were it from there. So Lacazette, I give a four. Give a four for Lacazette. Uh, Bamiyan, get the captain's armband off him. There's something clearly not right with him. There's something clearly not right with him. He tried. Don't get me wrong. He had a go today. He was driving at defenders. He was running with the ball. He had a few shots. It's just not happening for him. It's just not happening. When he looks out, you know. It's um, it's one of those where it's like, well, when you looks out, it's the way it goes in football. But it needs to turn around fast. But I'd take the, to be honest, I'd take the armband off him. I'd take the captain's armband off him. I'm sorry, but I would. I don't think he's a captain for me. Doesn't leave from the front. But most people would probably slate me for that and probably call me a fucking wanker or something. Call me a gender. I have an agenda. I ain't got a gender against Aubameyang. I've just got, I just want a captain that can lead. Like your Patrick Vieira's, like your Tony Adams. That shout an order. 
Someone that can take the club by the scruff of the neck and lead from the front. It's a joke. But Aubameyang, I'll give a free, free today. That's what I say, free for Aubameyang. <sighs> Subs, Sabios, spun around, did fuck all, gave the ball away needlessly at times for uh, Maitland-Niles, how they had a touch but gave away needless fouls. Again, four. And Ketia came on, had that touch in the box. If he'd have touched that right and slotted it, we'd have been praising him. But due to that, just a standard straight down the middle four. Well, it's not even straight down the middle. But I'll give him a four because of that touch. Um, manager rating. I'm sorry, Mikel. Back to you. But lose the next three games and that could be it. If he loses the next three games, I think that's it. I think he's getting sacked. I think he'll be our tetter out, honest to God. It can't continue like this. No way. But people will say, well, if we get rid of our tetter, who do we get? Who's available? There's Poch, Allegri, Sam Allardyce is available. Why not? Relegation fight. Perfect. Yes. Can Sam Allardyce get him in? <laughs> Fucking Sam Allardyce would be perfect for this job. Relegation fight. Oh, that's me to a T. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. When you're in a relegation fight, who do you call? You call Big Fat Sam. <laughs> yes. But yeah, everyone will say, well, if we get rid of Arteta, then who do we get? Like you say, Allegri, Poch, Sam Allardyce. They're all available, so... But it's like, the manager needs to take responsibility for the players that he picks. He puts faith... In players like Xhaka, Bellerin and Holding, when they clearly don't deserve a place in this team. No way. I'm glad they're both suspended, Bellerin and Xhaka. I'm glad they're both suspended. I hope Cedric gets a game against Southampton because he can actually put a ball into the box. He can actually drive at defenders. His positional sense is better than Bellerin's. But I just hope Bellerin's played his last game for Arsenal. And I hope we sell him in January. Same goes for Xhaka as well. Fucking <sighs> joke, honest to God. I'm just glad that it's fucking over. But, 15 for the league, 7 points off top 6, 5 points off the relegation zone. Fucking hell. It is a mess, and it needs to be sorted out. ASAP. Because if Arteta loses his next 3 games, I think that's it. That's it. That'll be it for him. So, guys. If you like the video, down below, subscribe to my channel for more content. Give me a thumbs up. So guys, till next week. Till next time. We'll see you later.